that radio chick Cheryl Lee here with you. Welcome to the Still Rocking It podcast where we'll have music, news, reviews and interviews with some of our favourite Australian musicians and artists. Today we chat with Adelaide's own guitar legend and old man of the blues aged just 27, Stephen Hawke. Stefan's longtime friend John Swan will tell you that he discovered Stefan, although I think Stefan was born with a guitar in his hand and destined for greatness. Hear how Stefan recorded his single Truth with legendary drummer from Deep Purple Ian Pace. What is Stefan Hawk up to lately? Let's find out. You're with Cheryl Lee, that radio chick. Today we have Adelaide's own Stefan Hawke in the studio with us. Thank you for coming, Stefan. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. I've watched Stefan grow up since he was a young, young lad. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about how we met in a minute, but I just want to know, Stefan, um, you look like you were born with a guitar in your hand. When did you know that um, playing guitar and music was your destiny? Is it in your DNA? Were you born with it? Did you discover it? That's an interesting one. I think predominantly it was... I, I can't really remember not wanting to be a musician ever since I was really small. So I got my first guitar when I was about four or five years old. Wow. Um, and basically, yeah, ever since then it's been my obsession and I can't, I can't remember not having a guitar in my hands basically are you from a musical family are either of your parents musical my dad plays yeah my dad plays a bit of guitar and plays bass predominantly and yeah he still kind of plays around a little cover band thing that he that he does so yeah that, that was definitely an influence for sure you probably did inherit the family genes from dad yeah it definitely wasn't from mum love my mum <laughs> oh, but uh i've met your mum she is lovely is she like me she can't sing yeah she's not she's not musical she'll be the first to tell you that too <laughs> we're kindred spirits i reckon <laughs> i love to sing but other people don't love it when I sing. <laughs> when I first met you, and our dear friend John Swan tells his story on stage sometimes uh, about the first time that he met you. Yeah. So we've heard his side of the story, which is a great, you know, it's a really inspirational story. John Swan, as we know, does a lot of charity work, and he put a call out one year for some musicians to come and help him. Do you want to tell us how you ended up helping John Swan that time? Sure. I mean, the, he, he tells that story a certain way and it's not exactly accurate. <laughs> Don't I let ha- the truth yeah, get in no, the way well, of a good story. It, it, it is true. I did go down there uh, yeah. to the Hampstead Rehab on Christmas Day, but it wasn't the first time I met him. First time I met him um, was actually at the Marion Hotel where he, I think my mum had sent him a video of me playing on Facebook or something and he said, oh, great, he should come to the Marion and get up and play with us. I saw that. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's on YouTube. You can find it. If you put my name in Swanee, then it'll come up. It's from the Marion Hotel in like 20... 20- 10 or 11 or something yeah when you were a mere slip of a lad yeah i was like 15 or something i remember him getting you up on stage there because he had a something. residency there yeah yeah, yeah one, every month yeah yeah no, it, it was it was cool and so that was when i first met john and um obviously spending time with him and stuff i did find out about all the work he was doing and yeah i did end up going to the Hampstead with him quite a few times and it was really rewarding it was good it was a good thing to do it is a great thing to do i went out with him a few times as well i would go to the rooms and collect the patients Mm -hmm. and bring them into that big room ready for some artists like yourself to give them a little mini concert and then i'd take them back to their room afterwards yeah no it was it was a really cool thing to do and it was eye-opening too to for me in terms of gratitude and being thankful for you know having the uh, capacity to play music and do the thing I love because a lot of people have had those kind of things taken away from them so it's very humbling and John is one of those artists that always always gives back and you're thankful as am I that we were able to be a part of that as well oh totally and help still rocking the podcast with that radio chick Cheryl Lee Let's have one of those songs now that I remember Stefan and Swanee playing about a dozen years ago at the Marion. Old Rosie from Swanee's Into the Night album. Back to speak more with Stefan very shortly. (laughs) 
Stefan, I've seen you performing solo quite a few times. Have you ever been in a band? Or? Oh, I've played plenty with bands. Ah, yeah, yep. yeah. All of my original material is is band stuff. Right. So under my name still, but it's yeah within the context of band. And I joined my first cover band when I was eleven. Wow. And we're called FBI, and then we're called Fly Sixty Nine, and they were all adults. So I was eleven, and the drummer was sixteen, and then everyone else in the band was like mid to late forties. So that that was that was a cool experience and I played with them for about seven years. Right. Until I was seventeen or eighteen. And then I moved on and started, you know, obviously doing, you know, solo gigs and stuff around the scene, but also playing with Sky and and Dusty Stevenson and all these people around town in bands and then op- branching out and doing my own stuff as well. So yeah. Am I right in saying that you are a blues man? Um, it's definitely a big part of what I do. Like, I love playing the blues, and it's definitely a big part of my guitar playing. Um, but I, I like all sorts of music, too. You know, I draw a lot from uh, country and soul and and kind of classic rock music as well. You know, I love, like, Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple and ACDC and stuff like that. Um, as much as I love B.B. King and Albert King and Stevie Ray and all the blues guys and, you know, the country guys like... Danny Gatton and Albert Lee and all these kind of, you know, chicken picking guys. You know, I, I, I love all sorts of stuff. Who would you say has been your biggest influence or is that too tricky? That's hard to say. I yeah. mean, it's constantly changing. I mean, if, if you go back to the beginning, like my first influence to get into music when I was like four or five is Elvis. Oh, yeah. I, I loved Elvis. And then when I was about six or seven, it became the Beatles. And then after that, I discovered ACDC yeah. and that's when I started like really hungering down and playing guitar it was it was basically me in my bedroom with a CD player and an ACDC album and that's how I learned how to play was just playing along until I kind of made a similar sound to what was on the CD so completely self-taught Stephanie? yeah I mean my dad taught me some basic chords when I was really young but other than that yeah it's basically just been ear just learning by ear and i was lucky that i my natural ear for music was pretty good so i I was able to pick things up on my own so it's a double-edged sword like you learn things the wrong way around a lot of the time you learn uh more complicated things earlier than you probably should and you end up having to unlearn them yeah (laughs) missing out on some basics and some things but i guess the conclusion I've come to with all this stuff is basically, uh, you know, 90% of what makes uh, musicians and, 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 and singers and whatever individual is actually their flaws and their kind of uh, the imperfections in their technique actually creates a lot of that individuality. So I, I wouldn't have done it another way. So I don't regret it at all. No. If you haven't had a chance to see Stefan perform, get onto the Googleometer and Stefan's Facebook and find out where he's playing next because I hadn't seen you for a little while. Again, Swanee was here in Adelaide not very long ago. Stefan and Sky Blue helped support him here and I was just blown away. I mean, you were good before, but jeepers creepers, you just get better and better with age like a cheese or a good wine. (laughs) Yeah, and you're only how old? Like a soft cheese, maybe. I don't know. I'm 27 now. Yeah. You are listening to Still Rocking It, the podcast with Cheryl Lee. A song now from Sky, who performed at the Arca Bar with Stefan and Swanee. This is one of my favourite songs of hers, although I do love them all. Yesterday's Makeup from her album In This Case. She performs around Adelaide with her partner, Damo. So catch them as well when you can. Did you ever once in your life have a plan B, like, or was this always it? I did a construction course when I was in year 10 or something, like a side course, but it was never serious. No. I always knew what I wanted to do. So, nah, there's never really been a plan B and there still isn't. Well, plan B really is I can always I can always be here and play solo gigs if I want to make a living, right? Yes. So, that's kind of plan B in the sense that, you know, I want to be able to go off and go overseas and, and play my own music and do all that kind of stuff. And what I've got to fall back on is being able to go and play in a front bar somewhere to three people and make a living doing that yes, yes. so i can always do that but yeah it, it's definitely um never been kind of something i've 
thought about. I've never thought about anything else. A lot of musicians say that, that really being a musician is really their only passion. Yeah, I'm pretty boring otherwise. <laughs> it's like, what else do you, like, people ask me, oh, do you have a hobby or something? Yeah, or do guitar. You have, do you have, you know, something you like to do? Uh, just, no, yeah, guitar. I, I stay, I, if I'm not playing music, I'm at home playing a video game or watching a movie or just doing something that's mind numbing and, you know. But otherwise, yeah, it's just music. I see that you are playing down at Memphis Slims yeah. quite regularly. Is that a, a residency or just... Not a residency, but I'm there. Um, so Memphis Slims is the bar. So this is a uh, Gilbert Place in the city. So Memphis Slims is uh, the downstairs basement bar, which is a blues-themed venue. And their ground floor bar is Shotgun Willies, which is more of a country music themed venue. So I play at both of those oh, places. Do you? Yeah, so I'll do more blues downstairs and I'll do more country if I'm playing upstairs. Yeah, I don't have a residency, but I'm at both venues you may as well have. a few times a month. <laughs> For those that don't know, that's near the Pancake Kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like Pancake Kitchen, Haynes & Co. in that kind of little area. Yeah. There. It's the coolest little quirky oh, it's my favorite, venue. It's my favourite venue in town. Yeah. It's cool, and you don't get a lot of idiots there. Like, I think people that want to get really loose and have a wild time, they'll go down there and they'll oh, this isn't for Too us. Too chilled. <laughs> and they'll get out of there. So it's great. So you don't get a lot of idiots down there or drama. So it's I, I love playing there. Yeah, it's awesome. What night? Is it more than one night a week? They have live music pretty much Wednesday through Saturday in Memphis and I think Shotgun Willies is Friday through Sunday so yeah they've got live music on a lot of Mm -hmm. the time what night do you generally go um well it depends so Dusty Stevenson has a jam on Thursdays and I fill in for him quite a bit because he you know is, is a typical muso and floats around and sometimes isn't available for things so I find myself there some of the time but predominantly I'll be a Friday night in Memphis Slims usually they have two slots so the 7pm and a 10pm slot I usually take the later slot yeah. because I actually like doing the later slot for whatever reason. It means I finish at 1am, which is a bit rough, but... Rockstar hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and because I, I don't live close to the city either. No. I'm, I'm out at Greenwith, so it's uh, about a 35-minute drive home. So, I'm, you know, end up getting in, getting in bed by about 2.30, 3 o'clock. So it and do you get rough. to sleep in? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> have to. Getting up early for me is like 9 a.m. So I know it must sound pretty pathetic to other people that do no. the 9 to 5 thing. but No, it's definitely rock star hours. Still rocking the podcast with that radio chick, Cheryl Lee. I think we'll play a song from Stefan's earliest influence now, Polk Salad Annie. This is the live version from the Essential Elvis Presley album. Are there any other regular gigs we can look out for? Uh, Nothing that's weekly or... It's all fairly random. Like, I'm doing minimum three gigs a week. Most weeks it's four. Some weeks it can be up to seven. Um, Wow. Yeah, I had one of those a couple of weeks ago. That was rough. Um, (laughs) It's pretty random. I'd play at the Grove in Golden Grove. Sorry, Downs, I think it is, actually. I play there... Uh, the first Sunday of every month. That's the only slot that I have that's kind of regular, but otherwise it's all all over the so place. So apart from your Facebook page, is there a website people can go to to see the upcoming uh, gigs? I generally post my gigs the week of on my personal Facebook page. Right. If you want to see what local gigs I'm doing around town, just add me as a friend on Facebook. I've got a like page as well, but that's predominantly more about my original music and all that kind of stuff. And I've got a lot more international people on there. Like my YouTube channel, it's more of an international than a local audience. And they don't need to know that I'm playing at a... No, that's true. ...bar around the corner. Yeah, because they can't get here. Yeah, they can't get (laughs) here. And, you know, it's just a kind of small solo show, so it's not a big Mm. deal. If you want to know where I'm playing locally in Adelaide, then add me as a friend. Mm. And if you'd like to check out Stefan's music, you said you had a YouTube channel. I do have a YouTube Mm. channel. For for a few months there, I was doing a, a song every Sunday morning. I'd have a track come out where I'd do a cover and I'd play all the instruments in my studio and stuff. So I've done 
about 20 of those so you'll find all those there and i play with another youtube band uh, called sing it live oh yes yes i've done probably you know a dozen or so of those at least maybe you guys tracks. are you know a, an absolute bunch of talented south aussies yeah no it's well worth a look it's flying the flag for the south aussie scene for yeah. sure and you know i've got a lot of respect for darren mullen who runs that and yeah and yeah. producer nerd producer nerd <laughs> we'll give him known. a plug shall go we go check him out he'll tell you how to mix a song if you go to his youtube yeah you are listening to still rocking it the podcast with cheryl lee how about this for timing just released Sing It Live, Sing It Christmas album. Let's hear Merry Christmas Baby featuring Darren Mullen and Stephen Hall. So, Stephen, during COVID, when we were all locked down a little bit, you did something pretty darn fabulous <laughs> uh, uh, with one of my musical heroes. Do you want to tell us how that came about? So, yeah, I was. it was during COVID. I can only assume due to a lack of touring and, and not doing much, Ian Pace, the drummer from Deep Purple, started a YouTube channel. And he had a bunch of Q&A stuff on there. And so I submitted the question to his YouTube channel, because I'd seen on previous videos that he had a little home studio set up. Well, it was quite a nice little home studio set up where he could record his drums uh, at home. And so I, I, I saw that and I basically offered a question. I'm like, would you consider doing sessions from your home studio for, for people inquiring, you know, overseas and stuff? And he said, yeah, definitely. It'll cost you money, but, <laughs> you know, you can, you can definitely do that. So I went, great. And then I tried to contact him and it was too hard to actually get direct contact with him besides leaving a youtube comment and the, the odds of seeing all that is really hard so after he answered my question i basically tracked down someone who worked for deep purple and basically said uh do you reckon you can get my song to to ian to see whether he'd be interested in doing it and he said yeah sure no problem so he sent that off and i didn't hear anything for you know a month or two it was cold winter's night and it was a showdown and the crows were getting flogged and i was really sad because i'm a big crows man um oh we can't be friends <laughs> yeah sorry about that um Go on. so the crows were getting thumped in a showdown and um my phone goes bling and i look over and it's an email and it's from ian pace and i'm like Bleh. sorry pardon the french uh so <laughs> i pulled up this email and it's ian pace saying hey stefan i really like the track i'd love to have a go at it so Wow. So it was all all go and then I realised I had no money <laughs> which was a bit of an obstacle um, so uh, fortunately I was able to do a crowdfunding campaign and, and get the money together to do that and I'll always be very thankful for the people that, that helped make that happen so yeah that was that was a really cool experience getting to do that so that was in 2020 that was in 2020 yeah this is, uh, you can look it up if you put uh, Stefan Hauck uh, truth into youtube you'll find it um or stefan hauck and pace into youtube you'll, you'll you'll find it so yeah that was that was really cool and uh, we also had uh, my friend expat south aussie uh, locky dolly playing the organ on that as well and he he's amazing yeah isn't he and his other brother and clayton as well yeah they're both yeah, great very cool they'll well, be here this weekend i think they? yeah with jimmy saturday night mm. Are you going? I am. I'm gigging. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> You'd be able to hear it from here, wouldn't you? Just about. <laughs> when I hear the race finish, mm. I, then I walk down to the concert. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jimmy's last one for a while too. Yeah, he's getting his hip done. And his back. Ooh, mm. yuck. That is so cool. If you don't ask, you don't get. So well done. Thank you. Yeah. On that. That was a great experience. When we were talking earlier about seeing you at the Ark with Sky Blue and Swanee, amazing. This looping thing, how many ears? have you got Stefan that you can hear the drums and the you, you just make these loops and then play with them it's amazing yeah I mean it's a bit of trial and error in terms of developing a good way of doing it and every song's different requires a different you know amount of parts and type of parts that you kind of loop together and if you do a half decent job of it you, once the loop's down it's really easy because it's kind of like playing along with the band yeah, you do sound like a big band. Yeah, because I've got a little kind of hit the guitar for some drum sounds. I've got a little octave pedal thing that I turn on and I can play like a bass line underneath yeah, it yeah. so it sounds big. And that 
basically developed as a necessity of doing a lot of solo gigs and needing to keep my hands working due to you know i had some problems with my hand a couple of years ago as well which was pretty scary and it was just a basically i do a lot of gigs where it's very quiet and no one's listening and doesn't matter so i figured well i might as well use this time to practice playing guitar you can't really play a guitar solo without backing (laughs) yes because it just sounds weird so um it was just basically out of necessity and and it became a part of the like my solo shows now are predominantly loops yeah. because it's more of a high energy thing and i think the crowd really enjoy that if you'd walked in you'd look around like where's the band oh there's the band yeah, like I've, a one-man I've, band i even had some people say oh you're using backing tracks i'm like i'm not using backing <laughs> tracks there's nothing pre-recorded it's it all gets put down live so clever that was the first time i'd actually seen you do that yeah. i know was i was amazed oh cool great sound comes out of it thank you as you said then we get a chance to see you just go mental on the guitar and do your thing i try i try my best (laughs) but yeah no it it is good fun but when it goes wrong it can go really wrong because if you're recording loops and you make a really bad mistake you're stuck with that mistake over and for the next four minutes five minutes you're hearing that mistake and every time you hear it go oh i'm an idiot (laughs) so thankfully i've got a loop pedal that now has an undo button which can be useful if you make a mistake Uh You can book me in, Stefan, because I think you and Swanee played at my 50th <laughs> here at the house. So you can book me in for my 60th coming up. Yeah, they'll be very close Pretty together, soon. the 50th and 60th, <laughs> won't they? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> couple more years but book me in love to have you guys back that was a great night it was a good night everybody uh, enjoyed be themselves. My pleasure. i'd love to do it thank you so much for coming in and sharing a little bit about the life of stephen hawk track stephen down and absolutely you know support local talent get out when you can and i'll see you down the front he's uh, well worth listening to you'll love him as much as we do thank you so much it's been a pleasure to speak with you still rocking it podcast with that radio chick cheryl lee thank you very much to Stephen for letting us play truth with ian pace from deep purple guest drumming You're with Cheryl Lee, that radio chick. Thank you so much for joining me on the Still Rocking It podcast. Hope to catch you again next time. Get out when you can, support Aussie music, and I'll see you down the front.